Welcome to our lecture online. Leave it up to the people making up the JE questions to always come up with something to put another dot in your head to see if you can figure something out. And this problem is no exception to that. So let's read it and see what we need to do. Also, I kind of shortened the text because it was a very long text to read. I put some of the details down uh, at the bottom there. So it says a long straight wire carries a current of two amps a semicircular conducting rod is placed beside it on two conducting parallel rails of negligible resistance. Both the rails are parallel to the wire. The wire, the rod, and the rails lie in the same horizontal plane as shown in the figure. Two ends of the semicircular rod are at distances 1 cm and 4 cm from the wire. At time t equals 0, the rod starts moving on the rails with a speed of, five, of, uh, of 3 m per second. And notice that the two rails are connected with a circuit that has a resistor and a capacitor, a 1.4 ohm resistor, a 5 microfarad capacitor, and at time equals zero, the capacitor is not charged, mu sub naught was given, and they said the natural log of 2 approximated to about 0 0.7. Notice the left rail is 1 centimeter and the right rail is 4 centimeters away from the wire that carries the 2 amp current. So I equals 2 amps, like this. Okay, how do we solve this problem? Well, we have to use, first of all, we have this semicircular rod that moves on the two rails. Does it matter that the rod is semicircular? What if I just replace it by just a straight wire? It would make no difference at all because it's only the change in the area that matters, so it doesn't matter that this is semicircular. So we don't need to worry about the fact that, that the rod is shaped that way. Okay, then the next concept we have to think about is the induced voltage. So first of all, notice that we have current going through here. That means we have a magnetic field that is in a circular pattern around the wire, which means over here we have a magnetic field that goes into the board. So we just kind of notice it like that, okay? And um, then what we need to know is we need to know what the strength of that magnetic field is and we can say that the magnetic field B is equal to mu sub naught times the current through the wire divided by 2 pi times the distance away from the wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the magnetic field at point 1 and the magnetic field at point 2 on the left rail and the right rail and then we kind of come up with some sort of average for the area inside between the two rails. So for B1, that would be equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 times a current of 2 amps divided by 2 pi times the distance of 0 0.01 meters. So let's see here, that's uh, 2 pi, 4 pi, that becomes 2, 2 times 2 is 4, so this gives me 4 times 10 to the, uh, divide by 0 0.01, that gives me 10 to the minus 5. And for the magnetic field at the far end, that's equal to uh, 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. The current is 2. We still get 2 pi. And here we get 0 0.04. And so that means that this is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 5. So the magnetic field is 4 times 10 to the minus 5, 1 times 10 to the minus 5. You know that it drops off exponentially like this because the magnetic field 1 centimeter in if we replace that by 0.02, it would already be down to 2. So the average magnetic field, the average magnetic field would be about 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5. All right, so that gives us a quick feel of what the average magnetic field is inside this region. So now we can go ahead and calculate the EMF induced. So the EMF induced is equal to the rate of change, the, the, the rate of change with respect to time of the B field times the area. Essentially, the magnetic flux per unit time change. We forget about the negative sign. So the magnetic field doesn't change, the width doesn't change, but the length changes. So it would be the delta length over delta T, which essentially is the velocity by which the, the rod moves. That's equal to B, uh, the width, times the velocity. So in this case, we had 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5. The width is 3 centimeters, 0 0.03, and the, the 
change in velocity, the velocity is equal to 3, so that would be 0 0.09. So that would be about uh, 0 0.9 times this, that would be about uh, 1.4 times 10 to the minus 6. And of course, that would be in terms of volts. So, do we have, oh, we're not there yet. We have the EMF induced, now we need to get the maximum current through R. Now, the maximum current through the resistor is going to be obtained at t equals zero when there's no charge yet on the capacitor. So essentially, there's no charge, so that's kind of like a closed circuit. After a while, when the capacitor charges up, the current will slow down. So that means we use Ohm's law, and Ohm's law says that I equals V over R. And in this case, the induced voltage is about 1.4 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by the resistance of about 1.4 ohms. So this gives us a current of about 1 times 10 to the minus 6 amps. Remember, these are approximate values because we don't have a calculator. And now they give us two choices. They give us A at 1.2 times 10 to the minus 6 or B at 3.8 times 10 to the minus 6. Of course, our answer is much closer to A. So let's say A is correct, B is not. The next thing we need to do is calculate the charge on the capacitor. We want to know the maximum charge, and the maximum charge is, of course, when the current stops flowing through there, when the capacitor is completely filled up, and we know that the EMF induced is going to be 1.4 times 10 to the minus 6 volts, so then we can say that the capacitance, by definition, is equal to the charge divided by the voltage across the capacitor, and therefore Q is equal to C times V. So in this case, the capacitance is 5 times 10 to the minus 5 microfarads. Is that correct? Yeah. 5, oh, I should say farads. So microfarads, that would be minus 6, wouldn't it? 5 times 10 to the minus 6, because we talk about microfarads, and there's 5 of them. Okay, and then the voltage would be equal to about 1.4 times 10 to the minus 6 volts. So when we multiply that, we get this is approximately equal to 7 times 10 to the minus 12, and that would be, of course, coulombs, coulombs of charge. And, um, well, notice here we have one answer that's 8.4, the other answer that's 2.4. So, it looks like 8.4 is the closest to what I've got, and I'm going to say C is correct and D is not. Again, no calculator, so we need to get some value that's relatively close to that, and I would say that yes, we're probably good with calling A and C the correct answers, and B and D the wrong answers, and that is how it's done. Kind of an involved problem, isn't it? Because you first have to set it up, understand that we have a magnetic field, you have to then calculate the strength of the magnetic field, kind of get an average. Then you have to find the induced EMF, then you have to find the current, and then you have to find the charge on the capacitor. So yeah, doing all that in three minutes or less, it's a tough task.